Right. All right. Let's do that. So good day. Good day. It is a privilege, folks, for me to have the opportunity to sit down and speak with a best-selling author and coach, Cassandra J. Howard. Mrs. Howard, how are you doing today, ma'am? I am doing so well, Dr. Jones, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, it's it's a pleasure's mine to have an opportunity to talk with you about this mission that you are on. You're on a serious assignment. But before I get into that, I want you to tell us a little bit about you. Who is Cassandra J. Howard? What do you do? Who are you? Cassandra J. Howard is, is a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and she is an author. She's been writing for several years, and I'm also a playwright director. I started writing plays in 2004, and we did our last one in 2019, and then we did a review of that play this year. Mm -hmm. My goal, or my assignment from God, that is, is to work with Black boys and Black men who does not always have an opportunity or a platform to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. um, one of the assignments is to Talk about the boys' relationships with their mothers and to the good, the bad, the, the not so good, and to learn from these men and boys to understand what's working, what's not working, areas that we need to improve upon. And one of the things that I have found is that these boys are there. We did the Black Men's Forum on June 25th. Well, we put together 58 questions and we interviewed 21 men. And we wanted to know, do a deep dive about their relationship with their mothers. And so my thoughts were just to take their data and then publish it in the book. But after reading their responses, uh, their responses were so compelling that I reached out to 13 men and two boys and said, may I write your story? And everyone agreed. And some of the responses were um, the guilt that's associated with the relationships with their mothers because some um, were looked upon as the men of the household when they were just boys. Some talked about positive uh, relationships where there were a father and, and a mother in the household, and they were able to gleam or learn from both. We are not saying that single parent households, or they are not saying, I should say, me, me, I do not want to speak for them, that a mother who is raising a boy, that that's a bad thing necessarily, but she cannot, based on what these men are telling us, she cannot teach him how to be a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Before we go any further, I want to go back just a little bit, and I want to set get a better understanding of who this Cassandra J. Howard is, and for those who are watching, and for those who are going to be watching perhaps on replay in the digital space out there, what led up to this? Okay, so give, walk me a little bit through your educational background, your professional life, and your career. Set that up for me and tell us a little bit more about you. Well, I have a master's degree in executive public administrations and focus in judicial administration. And I have over almost 40 years of federal service, but that has nothing to do with what God has assigned me to do. And what, what caused me, what was the fire underneath me doing this is that for about three or four years, my husband and I, we were talking about the plight and the the things that black men and, 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 and black boys go through on a regular basis. And so after doing much praying and asking God about direction and what it is that he wanted me to do as a black woman to help these boys or what's the assignment really is what I was asking him. And I would walk for three years, believe it or not, 10,000 steps every single day, praying and asking God, what's the assignment? I was going through some things and I know that when we are going through some things, God is setting us up to do something better. And it's, it was beyond Cassandra. It was not about me. It was something he wanted me to do. And he did not answer me at first. 
And, and looking back and retrospect, of course, I don't have all the answers, but my thoughts were he was getting me ready. You were not, my, th my skin was too thin. I was not ready to receive an assignment of this magnitude and God knew it. And so after talking with my husband and doing a lot of praying, God finally answered. And what he said is that you have a responsibility to help these black men and to help these boys our boys in the 1950s, 1960s were the most respectful. And here we are in 2023, and they're the most feared. I have a problem with that. Tell me what is the problem? What do you see as the problem that Black boys and Black men are faced with? What, 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 what is the problem? What is the pain? Can you unpack that for me? Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Jones, for that question. There are several problems, but I'll give you a few based on what the stats, what the data is showing me or showing us in this book, what the men are saying. One, the major problem is that the boys want and desire a relationship with their fathers. Even if the fathers are not married to their mothers. They need their fathers. And if their fathers are not available, they need some extension of a positive black, real, black male role model to help them, to guide them, to nurture them, to mentor them along the way. That's one problem. The other problem is, and this is based, this is not Cassandra speaking. This is what the data is showing. Mm -hmm. 100% of the men interviewed said that our school systems are not set up to teach our Black boys. Too often they are labeled as unteachable. Our boys do not learn the same way as girls. And so when they're being, being boys and playing around, they are labeled as problematic. Whereas this is what the men are telling me and the boys are telling me that if you take someone, a child that's not black, oh, they're just being boys. That's another problem. The other problem and sisters, please take this in the matter in which it's, it's intended. It's not to put the sisters down. It's not, put, it's not to put the mothers down in many cases the mothers are doing the best that they can. 37% or around there said that they were told that they were the man of the household. Now, I thought that this was a good thing, but based on what the boys and men are saying, this is not a good thing, especially when there's not a male a black male adult role model to show them what it means to be first a boy and then later a man. And so when they're told that they're the man of the household, it causes some anxiety. It makes them nervous because they simply do not know what to do. Or if you said they didn't want to make a mistake because they wanted to please mama. And so there are, those are the problems. These men also gave solutions or recommendations. And the recommendations is to get the men, if daddy's not there, get, get mentors for them. Go to the schools, get involved, see what's going on, ask questions, show up for mm -hmm. those babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to Cassandra J. Howard, the best-selling author of the book, A Guide for Black Women to Break the Generational Curse. Letters from your Black boys, mama, please hear my cry. So when men, uh, boys and men, are faced with this kind of pain, what does that look like when that boy grew up to become a man and perhaps married with a family, but that pain has never been dealt with what does that, when that plays out, what does that look like? 
I love that question. He takes on the emotionalism, if you will, of his mother. For example, in the movie Claudine, when Claudine, she had five kids, I believe, and she was a single mother. She was a housekeeper for others. And she met this man, James Earl Jones was the person who portrayed her future husband, who was a, who was a garbage man, or now we call it sanita sanitary worker. And they fell in love. And he really wanted to marry her. But because of Mr. Welfare, if he married her, she could not no longer get public assistance. And he knew that his salary could not provide for her and all of her kids, plus he had a child or two of his own. So one day she had prepared um, a surprise birthday party for him and he did not show up. So her second to youngest son, who had taken on her emotions because he didn't have any examples of male masculinity, he took his son, his brother, put him on the handlebar and the, the song to be invisible was playing it by Gladys Knight was playing in the background. And he was going to confront James Earl Jones, the father to be, but when he got there, the lady told him, oh, you're looking for him. He moved out. And so he had all of this bottled up emotion. So the song was playing to be invisible. And some of the words are to be invisible will be my claim to fame, a world that's so mean that way I won't have to feel the pain. He had all this pain. So when he got home, he looked at his mother. Of course, she was just emotionally bent and hurt and worried because he didn't have a male person to show him how to deal with those thoughts. He too bottled up his emotions. He didn't know what to say or what to do because he's a child. And he took, there was a paper banner and he grabbed that banner and he just snatched it down and he went to the next room. So what he does, what this, how does this affect? He takes on the, the female attributes because he doesn't have an example of masculinity to teach him how to deal with those thoughts or that those pain points. And what it looks like in school is that he's told that he can't learn, he's unteachable. And so he begins to believe those things. One, the stat shows one out of three of our black boys. This is a quote from Bernie Sanders. One out of three black boys will go to prison, prison in their lifetime. That's a problem. Why is it that a black boy or a black man is immediately feared in America. Why, why the fear around black boys and black men? Why do people get uncomfortable sometimes? I'm making an assumption, right? That people are uncomfortable and that they do fear us. Uh, can you speak to that, that factor of, of what is it about a black boy or a black man that makes that makes us uneasy? That's, a, that's another excellent question. And based on what these men are telling us is that you people fear what they don't understand. If, if, you don't get, if you don't establish a relationship with someone, get to know who they are, their character, their background, their belief patterns, yet you fear them, that's a problem. They're feared because of the color of their skin. They're feared because they're looked up on as a threat when they're not. They're looked up on as unteachable. They looked up on as thugs. They're looked up on as the only thing that they're, and these are what the men are saying. 
that the only thing they're good at is playing sports. They're not respected for their intellectual capabilities. They're looked upon as a menace to society that they don't take care of their families and that the women, they're left behind because the men don't want to be involved. And that's another lie. Why, why do we believe that lie? Is it not true that many Black men are, let's just say, not as responsible as they should be or could be? Where did this conception come that Black men are not responsible, we're not resourceful? Where did that come from? Where, where's the root of that? I, I, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what the man has told me. It comes from the idea, and again, I'm not putting down the sisters because I was a single mother, so I understand. It comes from the idea that society takes care or provide for women with children at the expense of the father. Wow. Wow, that that right there. We, is... you know, we're gonna we're gonna give you we're gonna give you you know food, clothing, housing, with the understanding. Go back to the movie Claudine. You can't have a man in the house, and it hurts. I, I'm so bothered by this. It hurts the children. Mostly the black boy, but the girls too. Because the girls need their daddies too. Because if he's not there, and I'm talking from experience, it puts a hold in, in their heart. And they start looking for daddy figure and other things and other men that will tell them sometimes, not all, what they think they want to hear. I'm talking to Cassandra J. Howard, the best-selling author of the book, A Guide for Black Women to Break Generational Curses. Letters from your Black boys. Mama, please hear my cry. Why did you write this book? What triggered this book? What triggered this book was all men and Black boys, and I want to get a, get a little bit more personal bone my brother's relationships with, with my mom. They loved their mom, our mom, very much. And for one in particular, which is near and dear to my heart because he just passed and we just had his memorial about a week ago. My older brother, Sweet Wine, Willie. When I wrote his story, I pre-recorded it on a cell phone. And it was just the two of us. And I went to visit him. He, he loves my spaghetti. So I made some spaghetti for him. And just the two of us went writing. And I said, sweet wine, before I publish this, I want you to listen to it. And he listened to it and he cried. And he looked at me and he said, San, he called me San. And sometimes he called me raw dog. And he said, out of all the things you've given me over the years, this is the best gift that you've ever given me. With tears just streaming down his face. And I said, oh, thanks. Is there anything, before I publish this, is there anything you want me to change? He says, don't change a thing. Just add one line. Don't change a thing. Um, how did you know this? He said, how did you know this much detail? I said, I paid attention. And I don't miss much. So what this is book is done, I won't say for me or him, is created a legacy that his kids, his grandkids, anyone who's attached to him can go back and see that's who he was. 
That's who he is. That was the impact that he had on the family. He may not be with us physically, but his story will live on forever. How did this impact you? And how is this driving the energy behind the Black Men's Forum that you've hosted and, and, and that you're continuing to host? How does this story play into the movement that God has assigned to you? How it does is that first and foremost, it holds, it's, it's, it's my assignment from God the Father. And secondly, and I hope that those who are listening can relate to this, I felt as though my father, my earthly father, who's passed on years ago, was speaking through my brother. And my brother looked at me and he said, Sam, I see what you're getting ready to do. You're getting ready to impact this world. I know you. Go on and do what you need to do. So my brother, while his legacy has moved on, he's my inspiration, or one of my inspirations, to keep on doing what I'm doing so that other people, other Black boys, other men will have the opportunity to also share their story. And I'm here to help them do just that. There's a wife out there. There's a mom out there. There's a young man or even a father out there that's saying, wow, this is me. I want to tell my story, but I've always wanted somebody to help me. I wanted somebody that I could feel safe with. I wanted somebody that could just help me get my story out. If someone is asking that question in their heart right now, how can they get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to reach you? Is there a phone number that you have? Maybe you could give? They, they, there is a number. There, there is that intake link. Okay. I suggest that they, they click on that intake link. Mm -hmm. You have it there. Okay. Uh -huh. Or they can, they can, there is an email address, blackboys at findingvoicesacademy.com. Okay, all right. And I do have a number. Let me get the number of a what, business. What, what's, what's that email address? I'm going to put this I'm going to put this page up on the screen. Finding voices. Uh, give me that again, please. It's finding black boys. Uh-huh. At finding voices. Uh -huh. Academy. Uh -huh. dot com. Okay, black boys at finding voices academy dot com. You can yep. go right there. Okay, awesome, awesome. And or they can call my business number 707 707 639 639 1339 1339. You got the number right there, and you can always hit rewind and play it real slow, and you'll get this number. Okay. But one more time, uh, Coach Sandra 707 639 1339. So tell me if I reached out to you to help you tell my story and to help me get my voice out there, how would that work? How do you work with people? You'll have, uh, first we'll do the intake call so okay. that I can learn what your needs are and we can together decide if we're a good fit or not. Mm -hmm. And then we will schedule time. You will work with me for 90 days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I will walk you through the process. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you too want to become bestseller, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can show you how to do that. So you're saying okay. that if I could, I get in touch with you and I fill out an intake form, step number one. And you're saying the purpose of this intake form is to see if you're a good fit for me and I'm a good fit for you. Basically, see if we like each other and we got good energy and we can work together, right? That's and correct. And then after that, it, do I enroll into a program? When do I pay for this whole process? When do I pay for this? You do enroll into a program. You can pay it in full or we can work out a payment plan up to three months. And then we'll start working immediately. So I, 
So I either pay in full or I can work on payment plans with you guys. So, so That's payment correct. plans is, is an option. And so after that, then what am I going to walk away with once I uh, get through working with you and you telling me my story? What, what, what do I walk away with? You will walk away with being a published author. Published author? You say you mean Amazon best-selling author if you so choose. Okay. You will walk away with having a legacy that you will pass on to your relatives, your friends, and impact the world. Mm. You will walk away with just being able to share. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a story. Mm -hmm. Many people want to write it, and they don't know how to get started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will be the conduit to help Mm -hmm. you to do that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, You've given us the number and you've given us the, um, is there an email address? Can I, can we shoot you an email? Sure. Black boys uh-huh. at finding voices, academy.com. Black boys at finding voices, academy.com. Dot com. Awesome. Awesome. Folks. I'm talking to coach Cassandra Howard. Cassandra J. Howard. She's a best-selling author of the book, A Guide for Black Women to Break Generational Curses. Mama, no, letters from your Black boys. Mama, please hear my cry. That subtitle catches my attention every time. Letters from your Black boys. Mama, please hear my plea. Mama, please hear my plea. Talk to me about what is that message that Black boys want their mamas to hear? They want to be listened to. And I I thank you again for that. These letters are actually the title of their stories. There were certain things that each mother, they're all unique, that had, had impressed upon their son. Some wanted love and respect. We think love and respect is a beautiful thing, and it is. But this is one of the stories. This is one of the things that the boys had yearned from their mothers, the lack of respect. Mm -hmm. One was hard work and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One person said, their mother said, oh, you, you, yeah, you had a baby when you were young, but you're going to take care of that child. Mm -hmm. You're going to work and you're going to be responsible. This person went into the, the military Uh, played for the NFL, did what he needed to do to take care of his children. Then another talked about leadership. This particular person was raised in a two-parent household and their father, as well as the mother with the mother's support, impressed upon them leadership. So what they're yearning for is to be heard, is to be understood, is to be listened to, and not to be told, just shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Just get in the corner. They're no different than other people. They just want someone to listen to them and to understood, be understood, and to understand the things that they deal with on a daily basis. Coach Sandra, I'm sitting up here listening and, and, and it's like my heart is right there with you. It's like, okay, where do I find this book? How do I find this book? How do I get this book in my hand? I'm a mom. I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about being a good mom to my son. Matter of fact, I have two or three sons. Where can a woman find your book at? Tell me, talk to me about the book and the formats that this book is in. Uh, you could go on Amazon and type in Cassandra J. Howard and you'll see the book. It's on three different formats. It's hard copy, it's uh, paperback, and now it's on Audible. Mm -hmm. It's available Mm -hmm. on Audible. We just got that done about a week or two ago. So. You see it there on the screen, am I correct? That's correct. A guide for black women to break the generational curse. Letters. From your black boys, mama, please hear my plea. How did you come up with that title? Tell me about this title. Why, why a guide for black women to break the generational curse? Why can't we just pray to God to just break the curse? No, we, we need a guide uh, based on my research. 
We need questions. We need answers. We, we need to hear from these men. We need to hear what their struggles are and the recommendations, the advice, the wisdom, their, their stories. And some of the mothers don't know. Some of the men don't understand. Some of the fathers don't understand. And one of the things I would like to leave the fathers with and the mothers with is that these boys are begging and pleading. I want my daddy. Mm -hmm. I really want my daddy. Mm -hmm. Two. I want their mothers. I need my I need I need my daddy. I I I I I need someone to show me the way. Mm -hmm. Not in lieu of the mothers, mm -hmm. but in collaboration with the mothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since you've published this book, what, 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 how have you felt? How has the book been going? And where do you see yourself going with this book? You have it on in, in ebook, you have it in print book, you have it in hardcover, and you have it in audible. Okay, and they can find it anywhere on Amazon right now. What's next? Where are you headed with this? Uh, I'm empowered to do more. I am doing more. In August, there will be um, another potential. We're working on it. Um, in an interview with Cassandra J. Howard, we're working on the location um, where there will be a narrator he will be interviewing me. Um, we plan to have at least 100 people in, um, in attendance. We're going uh, where we think the need will be. And they, everyone in attendance will have an opportunity to ask me questions about this book. I'm using it as a teaching opportunity. I want to hear the hard questions. I'm not going to shy away from those. I am the conduit that God has chosen to help represent these boys and these men. And I'm going to do it with all the vigor and might that I have. So look for me. It's going to be posted on Facebook and everywhere I can possibly post it. Come, ask the questions, learn so that we can be, work together. And it's not just a Black family. Mm. We need society. Yeah. Because society is a part of the problem too. Mm -hmm. And I will say, that some of the greatest supporters on this journey, they have not all been black families. Mm -hmm. So I need to say that. It's gonna take the collective we to fix this problem. Yeah. But those boys didn't, didn't cause it. Is there anything <laughs> about this project and this movement and your book that you wanna share that I didn't ask you or that we haven't addressed? The thing that I, I want to say, and I've kind of alluded to it, but I, I really do need to say is that when God is with us and he's given us an assignment, he will give all, not some, all the resources, people, places, money, supplies, whatever, that we need to see the assignment through, because after all, it's his assignment. And God is not a God of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I would just ask that those of you who wanna make a difference, walk with me on this journey to impact this world. Wow. God for black women to break the generational curse by 
Cassandra J. Howard. It's available anywhere. You can find books on Amazon and you can uh, locate her there. Would you mind giving the contact information so that somebody can either email you or phone call you if they have a story they want to tell or they know of a man or a boy who has a story to tell that you can help them with it? Sure. The email is blackboys at findingvoicesacademy.com. That's blackboys at findingvoicesacademy.com. And my business number is at the look 707 639 1339. 707 639 1339. Thank you, Coach Cassandra Howard, and I wish you the very best, and I pray God's blessings upon your work, because it's a much-needed work. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Jones. It's, it's my pleasure. Appreciate you very much. Thank you so much.